Good. So continuation to from the previous lecture, uh, I was talking about the time gauge. I said this is a time gauge in uh, the metric formalism. In the tetrad formalism, time gauge is also something a little bit more. Because in the tetrad formalism, we have a tetrad here, EAI uh, final, and a tetrad here, EAI uh, initial, OK? Function of x, of course. Um, and uh, I have this Lorentz index here. And I can do the same. I can also here um, take the uh, this matrix, well remember, uh, here it was symmetric. So if I put a 0 here, and it's automatically it's a 0 here. This is not symmetric. So to put a 0 here and a 0 here, the, the two different conditions, and uh, reduce it just to the three-dimensional part, which I call uh, a, uh, uh, AI, with both a, a is a space-time index 1, 2, 3, and i is an internal index 1, 2, 3, um, where this is a triad. This is a triad. And uh, you see, in this, this is a time gauge. Uh, this is again the time gauge, but it's a time gauge in the tetrad form, which is stronger, because it's not only putting uh, this equal to 1, which is called um, laps equal 1 condition, and this equal to 0, which is called shift equal 0 condition, but it's also um, orient the Lorentz frame appropriately. And how appropriately? Well, it's completely obvious. You sit on the three-dimensional surface. The three-dimensional surface itself defines a frame for you. If you're on a point, you So uh, the fact that you're at the boundary breaks um, uh, SO3, 1, down to SO3, in the sense that it picks up a preferred subgroup of SO3, uh, of SO3, 1, which is the one that leaves the, the surface invariant. Right? So the boundary itself um, breaks the Lorentz invariance down to rotation invariance. Of course, you still have the rotation invariance, because on this, uh, on this locally, on this surface, you can, you can rotate. So this is a this, this uh, breaking of Lorentz to SO3, or equivalently, uh, in terms of uh, algebra, SL2C uh, down to SU2, <coughs> it's a uh, 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 characteristic of the fact that we're sitting on a bounder. Okay. We're looking for transition and, uh, um, on the boundaries. And uh, um, this is a two-form B. So I can take the two-form and uh, restrain it to sigma. So I get a, a two-form sitting here. If you want in coordinates, I'm just going from B mu nu ij down to uh, B A B ij. I'm just looking at the component. Uh, at the components um, where, which are space uh, coordinate with respect to this one. So this is an abstract uh, analogous things. But these are, uh, again, Lorentz indices. And uh, I have naturally broken down Lorentz to SO3. So I can take its space and uh, uh, its component with respect to this breaking. So let's do it abstractly, which is um, which is cleaner. Um, if I have a surface in three-dimensional surface space-time, I have uh, in each point a one-form um, n, um, uh, which is uh, which is naturally defined, right? N mu uh, being epsilon mu nu rho sigma. Uh, let's do it uh, generically. Uh, dx nu, dx rho, dx sigma over uh, d sigma 1, d sigma 2, 
the sigma 3, where sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 are uh, coordinate on the surface, uh, and uh, x and x mu of sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 is the embedding map of the surface space-time. If I use those particular coordinates here, where uh, this is t equal constant, then uh, uh, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 is just x1, x2, and x3, so n mu in that particular coordinate is just 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so this, this is the coordinate version of it, this is the absolute version of it. This is a one form, it's naturally defined by, in terms of, of that. But since I have a tetrad, from n mu, I can then find a uh, object with indices in the Minkowski space, uh, sorry, uh, as e i mu n mu. So uh, this is a geometrical object. This is a field I have. So this gives me, in each point, an object in, in uh, Minkowski space. And with that, I can break this b um, sigma ij in two parts, one being b i j and j, b sigma, and one b b sigma star i j and j. And I call one of the two, of course I never remember which is which, uh, l i and this is k i. And again, in coordinates, uh, if, if I have uh, these coordinates here and I work in this gauge here, um, then uh, uh, the, the zero component of the tetrad, um, if, if this has this form here, the zero component, I, I have a, one, a zero here, so I have a zero here, so again, an i. Uh, it's just one zero zero zero. I'm, I'm, I'm working this in parallel of the abstract uh, notation and the coordinate notation. So this is just uh, b um, i zero, and this is b um, uh, j. Uh, 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 this is b k l epsilon. K L zero uh, I. Okay. So um, uh, I'm taking B I J, which is anti-symmetric. Um, this is L. So this is zero on the diagonal because it's anti-symmetric. L is this one. And K is, is, is this one. So I'm, 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 I'm breaking B in, the, I, if you think that this is a F mu nu, this is electric field, this is a magnetic field. Right? This is the 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 component. This is the um, 1, 2, uh, 2, 3, 1, 3 components. It's electric magnetic field. So B breaks into, uh, 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 into a electric and magnetic part because I have a Lorentz frame uh, which separate the two. Of course, F mu nu breaks in electric magnetic only once you have a frame. If you have a different Lorentz frame, uh, the, the two get mixed to one another. So breaking um, uh, Lorentz down to SO3 allows you to break F mu nu into electric and magnetic part. Here you're on a boundary. Um, you, you have something that naturally breaks SL, uh, to C down to SU2. So the B fields, uh, 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 break in this part, which are actually vectors, because L0 is 0 here. So this is actually uh, a vector, and this is actually uh, a, a, a k, a vector. The 0 component of both are 0, because if I put 0 here, this is 0 by antisymmetry, and if I put 0 here, this is also 0 by antisymmetry. So L, L is actually 0, L vector, k is 0, uh, k vector. So I have defined these two things, L and k which are what? Are just the electric and magnetic components of B. In the two forms, 
right? This is electromagnetic component in the internal indices. Right? This is L and K, and this will play a key role in the in, in the in the future. Uh, let me say something more about them. Um, think here. Uh, uh, F is d omega plus omega omega. So if I do the canonical analysis of this, uh, the conjugate variable to omega is whatever sits in front of the time derivative. Omega is b. So b is the conjugate variable to omega. And if you think in um, Young-Mills uh, canonical theory, the conjugate variable to the connection um, sits correctly in the algebra. And it's, uh, it, it is, uh, uh, in terms of Poisson bracket, it has Poisson bracket which gives the algebra itself. So you can see it's a generator of the transformations of SL2C. So B, uh, in, in the canonical theory, is going to generate a transformation of SL2C. And here you have the rotations and the boosts. So this is a generator of rotations, and this is generate generator of boosts. Once again, the distinction between the rotation and boosts in, in, in the Lorentz algebra makes sense only if you have a preferred uh, frame. Otherwise, you cannot distinguish rotation uh, from, from boosts. You need, you need some surface in Minkowski space to separate the two. Good. So I've defined L and K, um, ignoring this constraint on B. Let's see what this constraint on B implies on L and K. This is a one-line calculation, but it's worthwhile doing. Um, so L is the construction, contraction of B with NJ. So um, uh, I can erase uh, this. And keep, keep this for the moment. Drop it. Or I can just copy this. L uh, uh, is B. Um, L I is B I J contracted with N J and K I is B star um, I J contracted with N J. So I can erase all that. That's the only thing I need here. So let's see the first what it is. So Li is Bij, which is all that stuff there. E wedge E star plus 1 over gamma E wedge E contracted with N. So I have Ij here, Ifj here, and uh, uh, Ij, uh, uh, Ij, but this is star, put it down, I. Uh, but of course, uh, this is B on sigma. This is B on sigma. So this is down on sigma. This is down on sigma. Now on sigma, uh, E, uh, let's do in coordinate, which is easier. On sigma, I have only the coordinate, the space coordinate here. So um, the uh, upper index has only um, space coordinate. So um, when I contract it with this, which is zero, uh, this gives zero. While um, I think I get it flipped, but it doesn't matter. Uh, while here I have an extra epsilon. So um, this I have space space with an extra epsilon it becomes uh, space time. 
uh, so zero space, the zero is contracted with this, it, it remains uh, the uh, space one. So this turns out to be, uh, remember the zero component is zero, so um, uh, L0 is zero, and Li turns out to be what remained of the epsilon, is epsilon ijk, uh, ej wedge ek. Okay. For k, I have an extra star, which cancel the star here and put the star here. So for k, um, I get again k zero equals zero, and k i um, is the same as before, except I have one of a gamma. So it's one of a gamma epsilon i j k e j e k. Uh, which means that I, I, I got something flipped there, which, which means that k is 1 over gamma l. So I got something flipped, what is flipped? Um, k has to be gamma l. Um, probably the definition. So the definition of l is the one with the star, the definition is, is without the star. So this is k, this is l. So this is k and this is l. Yeah. So that's a correct definition. So now you see that uh, k is gamma l. k vector is gamma l. Sorry for mixing up the few. I never remember which is which. Uh, this is still the boost, and this is still the rotation. So, summarizing. Um, on the boundary, uh, this B has an electric and magnetic part, which I call K and L. And uh, the constraint of B is that the electric and magnetic part are proportional to one another, the proportionality constant being gamma. Okay? So if you want, general relativity is a BF theory where on the boundary is, is an SL2C BF theory, where on the boundary the generator of SL2C, um, which are boost and rotation, are proportional to one another. That's GR. GR is a BF theory, is an SL to C BF theory. That's the fine GR entirely. If I say what is the theory whose action is SL to C BF, but uh, the SL to C generator boost and rotation on the boundary are related by this relation, this is GR uniquely. So <coughs> You will see that the entire construction of the quantum theory, which we start this afternoon explicitly, is based on this equation here. This equation here will be the, the key equation on which everything is built. But this equation, uh, it's very interesting by itself. And uh, um, I want to um, describe it a little bit uh, more in detail to you. Some of its... Uh, Properties. Um, what, what do you mean exactly when you say GR is a BF theory where on the boundary they are related? I mean, if I, I, I cannot consider a, a, a space time without boundaries? Uh, well, on the boundary, everywhere this is true. In the sense that in, in, in space time, in every point, in every a given any surface, you consider it the boundary of a region, and this has happened to be true. In any 3D surface, then this In any 3D surface passing for any point of space time. Passing. 
So given a space time, uh, would satisfy the Einstein equation, the, you, 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 you write, you, you, choose, you choose a point, you, have a, you choose a surface, a three-dimensional space-like surface passing through it, and uh, you, you have the B field and the omega field, right. and you restrict the B field there, you consider its electric and magnetic components, and they happen to satisfy this condition here. This is sort of trivial. What is remarkable is the opposite, <laughs> is that this, this condition by itself seems to be sufficient to give the full theory in some sense, which, is, uh, which I'm not being clear about, but I will say something about in a moment. But the service needs to be a Cauchy service. I mean, they, you cannot take, I mean, if you have a global space time, you take a service. But this is local. I don't yeah, care yeah. about local. Locally, any surface is a Cauchy surface, locally, yeah, sure. for, for a while. Yes. If you put the units back, does Newton's constant sit in this equation or in the BF? Uh, 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 no, it doesn't. No. no, it doesn't. So it's in the definition of the B and the F. Then. It's uh, uh, Newton's constant sits outside here. Okay. So there is an eight pi g here, an eight pi g here. Yeah, no, so let me, let me be precise. It sits in, when I said that B is the conjugate variable of omega, that's not true. The conjugate variable of omega is B divided by 8 pi G. Okay. Okay? So the Poisson brackets between B and omega will have a uh, 8 pi G on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. the, the momentum conjugate to omega is, is this divided by. Um, so, um, in the quantum theory, this will become generator of, of rotation and translation, but the generator is, the generator is not B, is the, it's a momentum. Mm -hmm. So, the relation between these and the generators will have a 8 pi G in it. In fact, we'll get in a moment to, uh, in a moment to that. Good. So, um, various comments about this equation. First, let's <coughs> let me relate a little bit to um, something I was saying um, earlier. Uh, these are two forms. So, two forms can be integrated on surface. So, Im imagine I have a little triangle here, and I integrate on the triangle the two form L. Okay. What do I get? Well, uh, this is one half the integral on the triangle of E i E j. So um, i j k epsilon i j k. And this is exactly the object we were considering in the uh, when I did the kinematics of uh, uh, LQG, right? So remember that uh, uh, the operator, uh, the, op the, the, uh, the object I, I, I call, the operator that I called Li uh, was, which I define in, in directly on the, uh, on the, on the Hilbert space, uh, I interpreted geometrically as the integral on, on a triangle of the, uh, of the triangulation of, uh, uh, of this quantity here. So uh, these L's are exactly uh, uh, to be identified uh, with the L uh, operator that sits in, in, in the dual on the, on, on, on the, on the links of the uh, spin network up to the 8 pi g. Okay? Uh, more precisely, if you See carefully. L is not this. Is uh, is the one with one over gamma. So to be precise, uh, 
um, this L here, there is a gamma. So if I want to identify it with a conjugate uh, variable here, I have the 8 pi g, uh, which sits here, which I put 1 in this unit, and the gamma. So the operator L, let me put a hat um, in the in the to, 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 to mean the one of the of the um, uh, previous lectures is related to to this thing here by eight pi g gamma um, this thing here e g um, i j k epsilon i j k and there's one half of this thing here um, nope it's the other way around one over a pi g gamma right so the area Remember that the area is the square of that. This is a, this is a, no, this is geometrically a vector. Of, uh, that's what we did. Uh, is is geometrically a vector, normal. Um, to the surface uh, and uh, whose uh, length is proportional to the, um, to the area. So, uh, the area, which is L, L. Um, is actually 8 pi g gamma uh, L operator L operator and remember that we had this mm, quantity not fixed here it, fix, it fixes it um, square um, so the quantity I left in the terminal is actually 8 pi g gamma with this gamma here so the gamma enters into the eigenvalue which we computed because the eigenvalue of this operator here is jj plus 1 and uh, uh, the eigenvalues of the area not the square are 8 pi g h bar um, uh, gamma square root of jj plus 1 uh, I put back all the constant h bar g uh, so this fixes a uh, something I left I left open before uh, by using exactly the uh, the Poisson bracket given by this action and by putting back all the uh, all the constant and also tell us now forget all the constant tell us that L square is the uh, is the area now. There's a lot of interesting things related to this equation here. Um, one is that, but at least two very interesting things related, or three very interesting things related to this equation. One is that uh, K is a generator of boosts. Okay, so let's square it. Uh, K square. Is gamma square L square. And L square uh, is related to the area. Uh, in fact, uh, is the area uh, square over 8 pi g gamma square, which takes away gamma, so we get that k is uh, a over 8 pi g where so this is an area this is the absolute value of a boost generator now there's a remarkable equation that was found by various people but the, the cleanest version is is by alejandro so his parrots um, uh, 
prodding. Gosh, I hope I spell this correct. Uh, um, in fact, in alphabetical order, uh, Froden Gosh Perez, F G P, which is the following. If you are uh, near a black hole, uh, so there's a this is a black hole. You're sitting here at a distance d from the black hole. Then to stay put. You have to accelerate, of course, otherwise you fall in. And the acceleration is a simple calculation with a Schwarzschild metric, is one over d, c equal one, of course. So you have an acceleration uh, a over d. So locally, uh, locally you are in a Minkowski space-time because I always, and you are accelerating the distance d, and you are accelerating with an acceleration which one over d. Okay. So. Um, the, uh, the, the generator of this trajectory, it's a boost, of course. Um, and uh, a boost k accelerates in, uh, uh, in the boost parameter. The boost parameter being the angle here. Um, the velocity, the change of velocity. Now, if you take the proper time here, and you consider the generator that puts you up in a proper time, uh, namely not in the angle, which is dimensionless, but in the proper time um, s, which is uh, uh, dimensionful, you have to scale this by a. So the generator, if you want, the Hamiltonian that generate this evolution um, is not k, uh, but is uh, 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 k over a. Um, so k um, is uh, uh, a times the Hamiltonian. So. Uh, Is up or down? I will try to wrong upstairs or downstairs. I have it wrong. Um, this is this is a one of a length. This is a, sorry. Is a k? So k is a Hamiltonian over a. Which means that the Hamiltonian that generates this motion is a a over eight pi g. Now, what these people have found is that uh, if you have something falling in um, and you measure its energy, some small thing. Uh, in this frame, it falls. The area of the black hole changed by an amount dA because an energy comes in. And the relation between dA and dE is dE is A over 8 pi g dA. So the change in the area is proportional to the amount of energy that falls in, uh, which is a re rewriting of this equation here in some funny way. In fact, it's more than that, because uh, if you compute the ADM energy of this black hole, which is defined at infinity, okay, there is an ADM energy here, which is a mass. And if you redshift it down to a distance d, the energy the, uh, of the black hole is given exactly by this formula here. The energy as seen from this distance is given by this formula here. Okay. And uh, if you remember that on a accelerated frame, um, UNRU 
was able to show that uh, there is a temperature, which is the UNU temperature, which is, uh, I always forgot, um, um, h bar times the acceleration divided by um, 2 pi k, k being the Boltzmann constant. Um, and you rewrite E as a function of the temperature, here you get a relation between uh, energy, temperature, and uh, I can do it, I hope my equation turned out right. Um, well, that's the only thing I don't want. Erase. So using as an input the UNRU temperature, um, you get that the energy, so instead of A, I write uh, T over H bar 2 pi, let's forget the Boltzmann constant, uh, T over 2 pi um, h bar. The 2 pi is upstairs. Too. 2 pi is upstairs. Make more sense. Thank you. And then I have uh, a over 8 pi g. A over 8 pi g. So the 2 pi and the 8 pi give a 4. Um, and uh, I get E is T A over 4 h bar g. And if I remember that energy and temperature are related by the entropy, I get that the entropy is A over 4 H by G, which is the Becker's Hawking entropy. So this relation plus UNRU temperature um, gives the Becker's Hawking um, uh, entropy. Now, Jacobson, that Jacobson, uh, some 10 years ago or something like that, wrote a very remarkable paper in which he started from that and that and derived the Einstein equations. It's a shocking paper. Uh, so from S equal A for H by G and from the definition of the Unruh temperature um, um, h bar a over uh, 2 pi, let's forget the Boltzmann constant, uh, derive the ice equations. But uh, if you rethink Jacobson result, forgetting about thermodynamics. So you replace S by A to start from, and you replace T by little a to start from. This means that you can start from this equation and get the Einstein equations. So you can reinterpret Jacobson result, forgetting thermodynamics entirely, by observing that there is a, uh, a local relations in, 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 in the geometry between uh, uh, an area element and, and, and an acceleration, which codes in some funny way the Einstein equations. I'm being sketchy here. There's nothing precise in this last part. Um, in fact, I don't have clear understanding of what is going on here. 
Um, but uh, I think there's something crucial here. There is a, another interesting piece of information, which is by uh, uh, Bytes. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, it's in, both in general relativity and in uh, electromagnetism, you can uh, uh, Take a simple scalar equation locally, demand that is true in every point in space time, in every frame, and get the full uh, equations uh, Maxwell equation or uh, Einstein equation. Uh, John Bites has a nice paper on that. The trick, of course, is that you're, you're, you're fixing the kinematics and you're imposing all the invariances. So you can, once you have all the invariances of the theory, one single small equation generate everything else. And uh, this is true about that, provided that it's properly interpreted. The trick, of course, is the interpretation of K, um, the relation of K with, a, uh, with an Hamiltonian and, 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 and a generator. This is the, the, the tricky part of the story. Um, so the moral of this is uh, uh, generativity uh, can be written the BF theory where B uh, is a generator of Lorentz transformation with the boost and uh, uh, um, rotations are, are, are linearly related, and the simple equations seem to be connected to a lot of surprising uh, uh, local properties of the gravitational field coded into the um, Einstein equation, which come in in uh, uh, the uh, FGP relation in Jacobson derivation, uh, in black hole thermodynamics, in fact, the space time thermodynamics, uh, uh, in ways which I don't think have been fully clarified uh, yet. Now, this part I'll forget. Um, it's just a suggestion for all of you uh, physics to be done. Um, this is what I'm going to use in the uh, quantum theory. So, what's going to happen? in the next course is that uh, we'll see how to implement this in the representation theory of SL2C and this will give directly the amplitudes uh, then uh, of, uh, of loop quantum gravity in the covariant formalism.